You know, the Veto hasn't really been working out quite quite well at all uh, throughout the last times we've seen it. It just it feels really lackluster once you get to that mid to late game. Like, Poison Nova's nice, but once that's gone, it's just like you, you, you may mm. as well die in the fight, right? Like, as long yeah. as you get that big ulti off, it's like, okay, you're done now. Your, your job is done. You, can, you may leave if you are the Venomancer. Still, RR are going to have a bit of a think about what they're going into for their fourth pickup now. It is very annoying to play against that Veno. For sure. Um, Reality Rift, because they drafted their supports earlier, won't have the option for the very common Witch Doctor response we see. Just to heal yourself through that initial harassment of the Manomancer. So, not going to have that sustain here. Uh, they took they take the tree and for Reality Rift. We have seen KYXY play this on the off uh, multiple times, so I like this. It's kind of a comfort pick for them. We've seen KYXY really build up fast and be very hard to deal with. This gives them some sustain to carry them through the damage of that Venomancer, and of course, um, I believe it was Reality Rift that prevented their tier runs from ever falling in one game, so... Really great pick for RR. They know how to play around this treant, and they do have really strong team fight with that overgrowth now. Yeah, we did see this last time from KYXY that uh, he was quite devastating this offlane treat. He just never lets you kind of forget that he exists. Constantly split pushing lanes. Uh, when he does join a team fight, the overgrowth can be very, very devastating for any team going into it. Uh, we'll see how it pans out this game. Neon Esports, they do ban out the Storm Spirit for Alacrity. RR uh, uh, looking to make one more ban themselves. But now they, they could assume that the Void Spirit should be mid. Mm. And it does appear to be that way because you're not really going to want to run the safe Five lane Void Spirit. Remaining. No. no. It's not the best scaling here, especially when you've got a Faces Void to contend with. So uh, I like the ban out from Reality Rift. The Lycan is taken off. So you're not going to have to contend with very fast push coming out. That's something that, you know, just makes it easier for Treant to manage that D push. I think for the Alacrity hero, TA is not great here. Venomancer kind of makes it hard to maximize your presence. Maybe something like the SF, just having Requiem on top of everything else. Seems on top nice. of the Blast, on top of the Shaker. Yeah, it's, it's pretty darn good. I think that Wombo combo just ties in perfectly if they want to play that way. He does love playing SF. We do know that. There it is. Yep. SF comes out. Yep. Nice pick up there for RR. Uh, it can be quite devastating on this hero, to say the least. We've seen it many, many times. Mm. Neon Esports, now, they're looking for a safe lane pick, right? It, again, it shouldn't be a safe lane Void Spirit. Should no. be the mid Void Spirit, but I guess they could still mix things up if they really want to. Yeah, um... Uh... I don't know, a couple of skim heroes in my mind are like the Terrorblade, but that's really hard in this game, especially with the AA. I don't think you're going to be getting max value from that hero for skim. Maybe something like a Phantom Lancer would be nice. They don't have the best illusion clear, although you will have to be careful about the Shaker. But we have seen a lot of teams still pick that peel into Shaker. So if you wanted to go that route beyond that, you should be okay. Uh, just careful about that spacing but you, there are ways to go around that but those are the only ones off the top of my head that's that's what we saw scam playing last time okay and that was pretty far back we'll have a think about it gonna point out neon esports with this draft really don't have many stuns going for themselves do they like in terms of control mm -hmm. you've only got the snowball and the the eighth remnant from void spirit that's really all you have uh, a bit yeah, problematic no. in these... Like, how are you going to pick anyone off? Templar They'll go for the TA. Ooh. I like the ending. Mm. That kind of means, though, you've got this safe lane Void Spirit down. I imagine... No, is that an off lane Void Spirit? Safe lane Venomancer now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting way to run this draft. Safe mm. lane Venom. Yeah. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, it should apply pressure in KYXY. I don't think KYXY should particularly care. The key thing for Reality Rift is play around Void, so chrono timing, and uh, get EXP under supports. This is really greedy, to be fair, to uh, 
to be fair to Neon, this is really greedy from RR. They need six in Shaker, six in AA, six in Treant, and that's a lot of levels that they need to build up. So there is some uh, some time that they need to build up. Neon, key thing for them is to give Yopage a great lane. He needs to find that farm on the TA. If he can get the good timing to Blink Dezo, I think they should be able to apply a lot more damage towards RR and RR. When their ults are down, they're not going to be keen to actually fight too much. Okay. It's going to be an interesting match to start us off. Of course, you did mention the earlier stat. They are basically even when it comes to performance over the past few series they've had up, up against each other. So we'll see which one can pull off the win for this first game. I definitely have to say I, I like RR's draft better. It seems much, mm. much safer to play. And it's uh, much more self-explanatory. Neon Esports, they could definitely win this out with this draft. It's just, there comes a stage in the game where the Void's going to outscale you. You're going to be up against an Earthshaker with the Blink Dagger up and Echo Slam. KYXY is going to be there, split pushing the lanes. And of course, you can't forget about that mid SF that's going to be infuriating uh, as you get into that mid game. Because he, he does tend to snowball out of control in this hero. Yeah, From what we've really seen. does. It's... It's an alacrity special. Like he hits his timing. He almost never loses lane on two heroes, on the SF and the TA. No matter what matchup, he still finds that farm. So I have confidence in this pick from RR. I think there's a lot of potency for it, and I think uh, they can make it work quite well. I'm, uh... Yeah, I, I think they've just got it. I There's something wrong with my controls. I think I'm going to need to reconnect real quick. No problems at all, sir. So uh, yeah, Pash has that that new TA taunt equipped right now. And it's always a bit of fun to be able to just taunt your enemy like that when you do do something a little bit special in that mid lane. It's been pretty annoying to play against as well, like just getting clapped at every two seconds. It'd be very fun at all. Hustler is gonna run into play hard, but play hard does have that level one tag team, so we only get one hit off, unfortunately, so Hustler will just run away. Both of them had brown boots, but apparently Playhard just could not catch up. Even though he has 5 movement speed more than the ES, which really makes no sense. Yeah, it uh, can be kind of funny when that happens. We we have seen a lot of these supports start with the brown boots as well. You know, and just uh, kind of run into each other without regen. Hustler does prioritize those clarity supports as you tend to and fight over the bounties. They'll go ahead, they'll take the bounty there for Hustler. It'll be a two for two trade. Play hard again, gonna activate the tag team. Dish out some more harass over to Hustler. We go to the laning stage. Nuts even gonna meet up with Play Hard as well. Just gonna dish out a bit of extra harassment on the AA. It's a bit surprising, I'm going to say, that Playhard hasn't started off in a try lane to try and go for an early first blood attempt. He's going to go down towards that bot lane. We'll be there to make sure Skem is okay. They do have a lot of kill That's... potential, though, with this tag team plus Venomous Gale down in the safe lane of Neon. Yeah, that they do. I, I think you would be a lot more secure if you did run that try, though. Like, if you had the additional damage John Uel could give you, maybe you clear that out. But... RR, they're playing really aggressive as well. Try lane to start off with. I like that. Skemp does go down straight off the bat. They know they can abuse this Venomance like this. It's such a squishy pause one to have. Once you get the nature's grasp off, it he just can't get out of there. Nuts is gonna looks like he's just gonna TP top straight after. But we do have some connection issues. Januel is uh has disconnected on the Enchantress. Never nice. Yep. Never nice, but is standard now. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's been the story of each day, Mike. It's always a disconnect. Servers have never played nice. Yeah. Brutal, savage, wrecked. We'll be back. Drew shouldn't really have too many problems here in the uh, in the safe lane farming on that on that faceless void. 
going to be up against the Void Spirit. Raging Potato can be, you know... Oh. Well, actually, that's a lot of damage coming out there with the Enchanted Creep from Januel. They're going to try and dive nuts on the T1 with that Neutral Creep. He wanted to try and get that final shockwave off and Ooh. does connect there with nuts, but Drew is just bashing this creep to death. Now the enchant Drew will get the creep. 72 gold. Yeah, it's a good amount of gold to go Drew's way. And he has a massive creep wave as well, so a lot of EXP to come out for both of these heroes. You gotta be a bit careful with how much you bleed out here, Johnny Well. Don't want to give those creeps out and. It is a bit Ooh. of an issue for... Ooh. Alacrity is uh, copying a lot of damage from these side blades. He has to be very, very careful right now. To get Paj, just put on the refraction and... Didn't get any side blades at the end, unfortunately, for your Paj. Alacrity was falling very, very low, but KYXY will give him the living armor. He'll have that region coming in. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a hard lane for Alacrity, but it won't. Yeah, Nuts top lane does end up going down. Uh, Genuel gonna get harassed out. Drew gets a bash off. Can he get another one? He has time walk. He does commit for this kill and does find it. However, mid lane as well. Alacrity does end up killing off Yapage. Yeah, that's a really nice pickup. Alacrity is playing on the edge in this lane. And again, you did see some really good spacing from Yapage, but it's Alacrity. It's him on his SF. It's a very strong comfort pick. You can't allow yourself to get too comfy in that lane. Now that you can't. Raging Potato now going to take a bit of harassment in this off lane. Does use the Resonant Pulse. Drew is just feeling very, very confident right now in that faceless void going up against this duo of Neon Esports. And he just continues to try and find those bashes. I can't really say the same for Nuts though, who's just being continuously chased down by Genuel. Now he's even got the Wild Wind Rick, oh, no. Ripper sending a tornado Oops. after him. And he might actually just be dead. No, he'll be fine. Oh no. Nope, maybe not. Aether Emblem does connect. Raging Potato. Cold Feet gonna come out. But he will go down. Drew trying oh. to fight back. There are kills going on in the bot lane. But they do kill off Skem. Or Raging Potato goes down. Skem goes down at the bot lane. And uh, Drew will walk back to the top lane after securing those kills. Yeah, it's a really messy laning phase from both sides. I think RR is going to be happy just finding the kills on Veno and getting kills on their Void. Just a much more favorable trade. You do have the urn up and running on Skem. So his laning presence does shoot up, but down mid. Aslan comes in to try and help out with the Fisher. Alacrity is still fighting back up against Playhard. Surrounded by even neutral creeps right now. Snowball will come out. Alacrity trying to run. Yopage will be there. They do secure that kill, but now Ooh. Playhard goes down. Now Yopage will chase down Hustler. Kuri is flying past Hustler right now as he runs off. <laughs> he will make it out. And yeah, all the uh... meanwhile, Yopage has just been clapping the whole time. <laughs> it's a lot of commitment down mid to try and stop Alacrity from completely dominating and it does pay off. Yapaj does get some time in the lane. Still a little bit behind but does hit the 5 point. So Alacrity, you know, he still maintains that EXP lead. Should hit his 6 fairly early. He's got a massive CS lead as well right now in this mid lane. Not the greatest news for the TA, but she can always just go ahead and catch up in the jungle if, the, if she finds that she needs to. It's that bot lane. Scam being chased down again by KYXY. He's forced to salve up, but they want that self cancellation. They do get it. Meanwhile, play hard. Does end up getting Hustler on the Earthshaker. KYXY still trying to run away. He'll throw out the Nature's Grasp, and that should be enough. Play hard, it's going to chase him down a little bit more for some more harass, but ultimately can't secure the kill. Yeah, it's, again, just a lot of aggression early on this bot lane, and this is pro this is really the best way to prevent that Venomancer from becoming a massive issue. You just do not give Skem breeding room and try to deny him the opportunity to find that early farm. Down mid, though, Yapaj. Yeah, he gets a refraction off, but now the cold feed's gonna be there from Nuts. No body blocks coming out, but Alacrity has the final raise. No, he doesn't believe he can reach, so he won't bother trying to throw it out. Instead, they'll go on to the Enchantress. Now Playhard comes in with the tag team, but you are alone right now, Playhard. 
You need to run, sir. Yeah, and just uh, just a lot of a lot of commitment down mid to ensure both mids do find that early start. Uh, Playhard's presence does kind of free up the lane just a bit for KYXY, but he does drop very low to the trades now with that Veno. So no no real point maintaining that lane still. Playhard still has a double damage. Yeah, but misses the shots. Oh, that would have been a, basically a guaranteed kill there for Playhard with that DD, but... The Hustler will get away with it. You'll go down to the bot lane and trying to secure some farm there to get that blink up. Been uh, falling a little bit behind on the Earthshaker because he was forced to go for those raindrops. Just feeling very, very unsafe with all the magic burst there is on Neon Esports. Yeah, it's, uh, it is pretty aggressive from Neon. They have been trying to maximize that early damage quite well. Drew again, just feeling confident. Continuously man fighting with Raging Potato. Does have the Chrono. Genuel goes down to the Enchantress. Raging Potato still trying to chase Drew. Trying to avoid that Aether Remnant. Will be alright in doing so. Genuel, he was just uh, running up this staircase for a second. I look away and next thing I know he's just dead. Can't, you can't enroach on the territory of Alacrity. Not without vision. Very easy for him to punish. You know, he's got all the magic damage now. He does invest in the point in Requiem. So he has a lot more presence in bigger fights as well. Now he's going to run into Yopash, who does get the Arcane Room, but Requiem does come out. Raises as well, but he won't have the final one. He ran out of mana. Hustler is there to try and help him out. Nice Fisher coming out as well. Alacrity still trying to run. Playhard is there with the tag team. It should be enough damage and will be. Playhard now probably will go down, but it's well worth it for the SF kill. Yopash does barely get himself out of there. Yeah, it's a bit of a misplay there. For Alacrity does get punished. That's a nice little pickup for Yopage, and he just keeps clapping away. Still has a lot to catch up on with that TA. Not the best starting farm still, but if you keep finding these kills, it can build up. We are going to have another pause coming up. It's RR's turn to have some DC issues. Which scares me, John, because when it starts switching over to the other team, <laughs> it means my turn's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, everyone gets a turn on the wheel, Mike. Still, one thing that RR hasn't been on point with, I have to say, is Chronosphere usage. They've just not uh, done enough to give Drew an easy kill. I think you just commit that Chrono top, find the kill in Raging Potato, and you're done. You know, you're not looking for big Chronos early on in the game. I think you do have to use it. Just give Drew a free kill. So you can start building up some more. He might find it now. Right, yeah, he just commits it. Aetherum though was perfect from Raging Potato, but Alacri gonna be there with follow-up damage. Raging does Astral Step towards the east. Alacrity waiting for that final raise. Drew trying to get a bash off here. Raging has another Astral Step. But we also have another pause. Back to Neon Esports. Alacrity could actually get the raise off in time. But Raging Potato will probably be spam spamming that R, that R button right now. Nuts is just around the corner. All he can do is really just chilling touch. Sorry. Hmm. Is a bit of an awkward time. Rather unfortunate that they didn't have enough bashes there, and Drew got caught by the Remnant, so... Not the cleanest kill. You are seeing certain rotations coming as well. Hustle is going to come in to try and help. Perhaps intercept at the other end of those stairs. Raging, do you get out of this? He's still holding on to that, uh, that Astral Step. Now does commit it and should get away, but Hustler now is there with the Fisher. I... It will reach near the neutral camp as well. Raging is still running away. He will make it out. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not the best first chrono for RR. They need those free kills. They just need to be able to 
maximize a chrono. So now that it's down, Drew just focus on farming up. Although shards still come out, Januel he just gets blown up straight away by Alacrity. Now the Fisher is there. Play hard is falling low, but Yopage is going to help take down the SF. Hustler will be chased as well. Now nuts, he will drop. And Raging rejoins his team fight onto Hustler and Neon Esports. The one to come out on top of that situation. Three to one is the trade. Yeah, that's going to be a nice little pickup for them. They have managed to punish Alacrity. So that little lead he built up for, some, for himself is starting to kind of taper off. And has to be careful about dropping there. Because, you know, a lot of RR's gameplay is tied in to this SF. Like, Alacrity really just sets the pace. And when he drops like that, it delays RR's momentum. So have to start being a bit more conservative conservative and nuts down mid oh, he's in trouble play hard's gonna be there with the tag team and no the creeps block him out of there and now the rotations come in from drew they will not bother chasing down that pos five drew of course doesn't have the chrono so it does have to be a little bit careful about uh how he positions himself here but play hard not gonna go in or oh never mind maybe he will he's looking for an angle it's like uh, Scam is just going to continue spamming away these Veno wards. That's essentially just feeding Drew farm though. He can't deny them in time. <laughs> and now, oh. gets caught out by the Fisher. Echo as well. Oh. And well, the Ice Blast was there just in case. They do secure that pause one Veno. Meanwhile, however, Raging Potato does get nuts. But now Alacrity on the chase. Playhard does end up dying to the SF. Say overall, RR do win that trade. Yeah, it's a better time for RR. They've managed to find a good kill in Skem. That's going to be big. I think the one thing with RR is the buildup on Alacrity is a bit different now. He is going for the Manta style first. So it looks like it is going to be a right-click SF game. We're not seeing him go for <clears throat> the Blink Yules. We usually see him. And it's just going to be all about the right-clicks, all about staying outside Chrono maximizing that spell another thing for rr is hustless build up to blink it's about 800 gold off can be important for him to find that as yopage finds his own blink so neon has a way to gap close and pump that damage out if they wanted to force these fights interesting to to note he went for the blink prior to the deso on the ta it's uh usually the other way around but uh, maybe just feeling like he needs that mobility. But that won't really allow for those really super fast pushes we're used to seeing from these TAs. He'll have to wait out the desk later. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to set that pace back a bit. Even the farming pace, like, yeah, you can jump from camp to camp faster. You're not killing the camps as fast. So that, there is a trade-off there, although nuts. Getting chased down, Raging is there, Hustler unable to help. Drew was there as well on the uh, on the Void, but couldn't get a Chrono off in time. Structures are fortified. The, the top lane, top they are starting to force in that T1 tower. Of course, KYXY is going to be out to defend that. And they're going to give up on the push. It's, it's just way too hard when you've got that Living Armor to spam out. Just too hard to get through it. Yeah, uh, Desolator would have fixed that, but again, Yopage did not opt for it. So that means RR finds the bot tier 1. They do take a little bit more control on the map. I think uh, the one thing that Neon doesn't have to worry about too much though is that KYXY is not farming too well. We're not seeing him go for the early Meteor Hammer just yet. And so he doesn't have the best of ways to completely stall that push. Eventually will run out of mana, although he does pick up the Arcane Boots. So he can, he can hang around a bit longer. I, I was a bit shocked when he went for the Necro 1. Usually you do just see the uh, the Media Hammer Rush. But I guess the Necro 1 will help him escalate and farm a little bit. He can still push with it quite well as well. So, uh, Shards, Nuts, again going to be the one getting caught out here. He does get the Ice Blast off in time. But they do easily pick him off. In the meantime, however... Diffusal Blade is now up on Drew. Damage should have escalated quite a bit, and 
Well, we haven't really seen the second chrono of the game yet, but they do smoke up now. Uh, there's a smoke as well from Neon on the opposite end of the map. It's down to who finds who first. Well, they still have that bounty up on the TA as well. I think they want to try and go for that <laughs> TA kill. But no, they see the Venos, the, the Veno mid. Skem's just been sitting there for ages now. Of course, just go in. Fisher is there. You don't really want to commit the Chrono if you don't have to, and they won't. Snowball comes out. Alacrity TP will be cancelled off, but Ice Blast is going to fly out. They will kill the Tusk now. Drew, do you want to go for more? Raging Potato does jump in, but he will time walk away, instead leaving Hustler there to die. And uh, Chrono is still there. Yeah, I'm, I guess they hold on to it for two kills. They drop arguably a bigger kill. I, th I think Alacti really is just that important that you can't afford to lose him. And Yapage yeah, finds, uh, yeah, it just blows up the AA. Slowly but surely building up on the TA. Really close to the Dezo. And RR, they're giving a bit too much in terms of kills. It is even. 15 to 15 at, well, 15 and 50 seconds in. 15 minutes and 50 seconds in. So... Even game, um, the key thing is the momentum for Neon is starting to pick up pace. RR is still playing the stall game. Alacrity doesn't have the Manta yet. So before that point, you know, this right-click build on the SF is not going to be online. Uh, Drew is stuck by the shards. He does finally get in now to play hard. Going after that Tusk, Snowball will come out. It'll delay things here. Drew will not continue the chase. He will back out. He still holds on to Chrono. Overgrowth will come out now from KYXY. This is a Chrono opportunity. Hustler Ooh. forced into Echo. Now the Chrono comes out. It is on two heroes. They do get play hard first. And, well, they will also find Skem. Great team fight there for RR. But uh, Hustler really did save the Dave there. If he did not jump into Echo, that Void would have been dead. Yeah, that's just the perfect blink reveal from a Hustler right on time to save his core. And Neon now going to have to be really wary about forcing fights in enclosed spots. They are, again, buying time here for Yapaj. I believe that is his Desolator flying up now, so he can blow up even more heroes on the map. And this might open up the rush for them if they feel confident. They will go straight for that Roshan. Without the Chrono up, you know you're kind of safe doing this. And there's so much minus armor on Neon Esports. They, they can really take this so quick. You do get it. Not trying to get in range to scout it out, but it was already too late. And uh, Neon Esports, they want to fight. Fisher in from Hustler. Cold Feet there with the Ice Blast. Raging Potato. Will dissimilate and run Ooh. away. Now, Requiem not being finished. Nuts does go down from Yopage. Warriors punch there as well with the Aether. And Alacrity's going to be in trouble. Looks like he does get blown up. Nuts, he brought back. But he might die immediately as Yopage is on top of him. Oh, with that no. po poison over there on Hustler as well. And yeah, they're just dying. Yopage on a triple kill on that TA. Shards out on KYXY. Neon Esports is just running over them. Overgrowth will kill off the task. But they want to commit. They want that tree and kill, and they will get oh, it. Oh, man. Bounty is claim your page on an ultra. He can't claim the rampage because there's only a, a void in his base <laughs> left. And they'll go back now for that T1 tower mid. Yeah, that's a really deep dive for those kills, but they find them. Really nice kills as well. RR, you are seeing the weakness of this trap. They depend on the chrono to really force out their hand and beyond that they don't have items on a lot of these heroes like they have great farm in drew they have decent farm in alacrity it's not the momentum you expect from alacrity they really need him to kick up his pace they need him to finish that manta into the bkb so he can stand and fight but he's just not able to find it kyxy as well i mean he has the mech but all of this is just sustain they're lacking control and they're forced to stagger into these fights, which works against them. They need to synchronize. They need to really just find one key pickoff and build off of that. They're going after the task. Raging Potato is there to try and help out, though. Drew comes in, does have the Chrono. Hustler commits the Echo. Now Drew will go onto the Enchantress. 
Alacrity still trying to deal with uh, oh. with Yopage. Yopage is actually in huge trouble right now. We'll lose the Aegis. Now the Chrono being committed. They're going to go after Skem. Skem should die very quickly on this Venomancer. And he does. And Yopage will also go down. Oh. So now right back the other way between these two. The... Well, Neon Esports just didn't have an answer for all the aggression. Yeah, and that's the one thing with Aarhus Draft. I mentioned it earlier, but the Chrono is what gives them these wins, and Neon just kept fighting while the Chrono was up. So that was their mistake this time. RR capitalizes, and with those kills, they bounce the gold back a fair bit with a 1.6k swing. That does lead to Alacrity's completed Manta, although Drew has to be careful. Doesn't have Chrono to play with. Yeah, well, Aura's punch out. Now Raging Potato's gonna come in. He does time walk away though. But Raging is not done. Shard's blocking the way as well. Ice Blast flying through. They will stun him up and Drew. Ouch. Ah. Just trying to go for an easy kill, but turns out it wasn't that easy. I'm not sure what he expected. He didn't have backup. He saw two heroes down there. Like, that, that was already a 2v1 situation, and we have seen a lot of uh, issues with holding down that Void Spirit. So, rather optimistic of Drew. That kind of undoes, undoes what they just achieved earlier on, and it does give Neon a slight edge once more. Um, RR, they can't afford to be this reckless. It's not... they don't have a lead. Neon, well, they have a slight lead, at least. As we do maintain a very equal game, Mike. 22 to 22, 21 minutes in, 2k advantage. That's a lot of twos. Yeah, that it is. Do you, you know what's uh, actually a bit strange, Mike? You look at Dota Plus. There's a 77% win, uh, win chance for uh, RR, despite that slight deficit. So, looks like the AI knows something we don't. I mean, it's no, it's just based on draft, though, right? Like, pretty much. It's like Chrono, I guess, is just undodgeable, so you do give it a lot of weight as the game goes on. Still, Radiant Neon with the smoke. Gonna try. There is There's no Chrono. Hustler. Get caught out here, and we'll probably get bursted down very, very quickly. Ice Blast flying in, but they're not really helping out. Radiant's top tower is under Neon, with this draft, need to play as quickly as possible, because this TA Void Spirit does drop off very, very quick. They're going to try and force down these T1 towers, but the main problem is you've got KYXY still defending these towers from a mile away. That living armor is just going to slow down every single push Neon wants to try and go for. Looks like behind the tier 2 tower now, they do find nuts on the AA. Ooh. Play hard does kill him off with the walrus punch, and now that tier 1 will go down. Do they try for the tier 2? They'll give it a shot. Yeah. I mean, they've got the Dezo, they can melt these towers a bit faster. There is the Chrono up on Drew, so the moment he heads back there, they can force a fight. And they do kind of play defensively. They're not overcommitting here, Neon. As certain item timings are flying out now for Reality Rift as well. Alacrity does have the BKB. Can just completely stand in the middle and fight to his heart's content. Also, that means you're not going to be seeing Skem be a major factor towards that SF. So, you do have a bit more to play with here, RR. You also have the Guardian Greaves up on KYXY. Additional sustain coming out for Reality Rift. That can help the cause. This is cause to smoke now for RR. Yeah. Chrono is up. It's time to go with that BKB on Alacrity. Playhard going to break the smoke. Fisher does fly out from Hustler. They're only going to find a support kill out of this smoke. Unless Neon want to try and take this fight, but it's not advised. Alacrity does get the kill for himself, but now Skem showing himself from that tree line. Does get the attention of RR. Ice Blast flying out. Doesn't connect on Skem, but Drew is on the chase. Aetherim blocking their way. They are going to change directions onto Raging Potato, but both of them do manage to get out in time. That Tier 1 tower, however, will have to stand there and take this, uh, this harassment from RR. And... 
the T1 is going to go down mid. Yeah, it's not the biggest objective at this point. It is 24 minutes in. So it was about time for that tower to go. Neon, they've still got a lot to show. You know, you've got the BKB and the Crystallis and Yapage. That's going to be a big reveal when he does join these fights. He's going to be able to tear through the back line even faster. Raging Potato is saving up for that Ags. Like halfway there, 1.5k left. Once that's up and running, the silence will really make it harder for RR to commit to any fight. So a lot of big pickups just need to wait it out for Neon. And they're going to be patient enough. They're not going to force their hand. They're just going to keep farming. Off that top lane, they're going to try and make a play on Takei or XY. Or rather just trying to get that tier 2 tower down, but again, he is going to heal it up. Nature's Grasp flying out does burn through the refraction charges of Yopage. Both teams just playing the avoid game for now. It's like RR want to try and set up down at that bot lane. You do have that Chrono up on Drew, so you want to try and uh, maybe go for a team fight, and they will smoke up now. Yopage going to be all oh. by himself getting No, it doesn't get caught out there from RR. They're going to... They didn't notice. Maybe they did. They're going to try and loop around to the high ground. Echo Ooh. being committed from Hustler. And with that, it'll be a very, very easy pick off. Even finding the courier of Januel on the way there. They'll check the Roshan, but it is about 45 seconds away from respawning. So, you still have the Chrono. Try and go for a fight. Ice Blast won't connect on anything. And well, Neon looks like they're out of there. There'll be no Chrono. Maybe Januel gets picked off, though. He tried to go for the courier. And they should have scouted him out, but no. He's more than far enough. Yeah, it's, uh, again, a, a pretty big target for Neon to have taken away. RR, probably not satisfied that they haven't used that chrono. That has given time for Drew to hit 18. You do have that max duration chrono, which you can make use of, and that stall has given the Ags up for Void Spirit. Well, Fisher comes out, Skem getting caught now. Drew doesn't want to expend Chrono. It's a pos one Venom kill though. It's probably worthwhile doing so, but they want to get it without that. And well, they are going to find the kill. Now, perhaps you can use Chrono here. Play hard does go down. Januel trying to run away. No, they won't need it. They just don't need it. They'll just keep going through mid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't tend to see that too often. These uh, voids that just never use Chrono, but... RR is making work. Drew is finding the kills anyway. They won't be able to clear out the objectives. They will just go back, farm up. There is still the Ags reveal that Raging Potato has to do. It hasn't quite shown that hand just yet. But RR go into the pit. They have the Chrono. They can just pop it in an emergency. Neon should have been aware. I believe there was a trap, but they will try to rush in. Yeah, I mean... I so suppose this is that point where Drew really is happy now that the Chrono hasn't been expended. Because now he can actually use it in this Roshan fight. Raging Potato though will jump in with the first silence. Second one there as well. Alacrity does feel like he needs to BKB through that. Roshan's still falling, but they're going to go and try and steal this. Requiem now out, fearing them off. And that will be the Aegis on Drew. And now you can start this team fight. Fisher out onto Play Hard. And Genuel. RR. Uh, uh, looks like they want to try and just back out. Drew getting dragged in by that eighth remnant, but oh, nice shards out as well, blocking that staircase. RR now trapped oh, up on Hustler. Oh. We'll jump in with the Echo. Now the Fisher there as well. Yapage does disappear. Raging trying to jump in there afterwards, but he just doesn't have as much damage as you would hope. Oh, and uh, Drew is going to be able to secure the kill now onto Raging Potato. And John, I'd hate to say it, they still have Chrono. There it is. Skem does go. get caught out. Glimmer Cape is there. It won't matter. Overgrowth comes out just in case. <laughs> and uh, with that now, they're going to try for the mid-tier too. 
yeah, it, a lot of patience from Drew does pay off in the end. And this should allow them to really easily pierce the high ground now. There are still spells ready to go from Neon. We still have the Nova when Scam is back up. And of course, uh, you will have the Ags that has been causing some havoc from our Void Spirit. Still, RR is not dissuaded. There is a repair kit. This is making it a bit slower. Sorry, John, I'm reconnecting because the, uh, the games kicked me up. Ah, as it happens. It was your turn, Mike. We had RR and Neon disconnect, of course. Oh, good. Yeah, that is true, actually. It was, uh, was my turn to DC. <laughs> so, uh, have... All right, I'm back. No. Oh. Snowball in. Oh. Just KYX white. It looks like they probably will find this tree and protect the kill. He's making it as hard as possible. Tries to go for the TP play. Doesn't make it out. Nah. It's a nice pick off. And again, the repair kit was stalling out the push long enough that they only take the tier tree. So Neon don't lose as much as they'd expect. This gives them an opportunity to fight back in. Still, you are seeing the build up. On Reality Rift side, you've got the AC up and running on Alacrity, so a lot tankier and a lot faster in hitting out. This means Yapaja's Deso is not going to be melting people as much as you'd expect that to now. And it gives a lot more presence to Rashad. Yapaj takes the Ice Blast. They really want that mid-tier with two tower. So the one time they don't have that train protector up to defend it, they want to try and make uh, make sure it goes down before he heals it up. Drew, however, oh, oh lane, Rage Potato, the hard slot just jumps in with the echo. Snowball gonna be there. He does get the yules off. Drew, we'll wait for the simulate. Raging gonna jump towards the west side, but well, scams there as well. Hustler, he may have gone a bit too preemptively. They will end up killing off that Earthshaker. Skem does die as well. And now, the fight will really start. Drew has Chrono up in five seconds. He's going to chase down Genuel. Does get a double kill out of it. Now Alacrity. Going to try onto Skem. Drew does defuse up Skem. And with that, he's going nowhere on the Veno. Actually, no, he does go somewhere, but he does end up dying anyway. And now the Chrono oh. comes out. They do find the Void Spirit. And Raging Potato is easily going to die. And now play hard. Got to hope not to get bashed too many times. Never mind, oh. he's getting bashed a lot. He will snowball, but this will be a tie back on play hard. Yeah, that's uh, not the way you want to trade Neon. That wasn't even a high ground fight coming out. So a lot of big kills going the way of Reality Rift. They do have to, I mean, they had to use the Chrono there. And unfortunately, there's a tier two in their way. So they don't quite go into the high ground. And this will give Neon time to respawn and reset. A bit of an opportunity for them to just kind of play catch up. If you look at Yapaj, did finish up the Daedalus during that downtime, so he does have a lot more damage, but you've got the Scotty up and Drew and a very late Mask of Madness up for Alacrity. A tier 3 tower, gonna be in trouble, what? Drew. Top lane, ends up finding Yapaj. It's a quick kill for them. He does leave that bot lane, so they don't exactly find the tier 3 tower. But I suppose finding the TA is just as good. It's, uh, it definitely is. It gives them uh, openings to take the next fights. It delays the farm. And uh, that does mean you're not trading perhaps a tier 2 top. Yapaj was kind of trying to set up for that. So it gives RR more space to breed. The Aegis does expire as well. So that was fairly decent timing for Drew. Might just wait out the next Roche perhaps. They don't have Chrono to fight right now, although they will go up. Yeah, Genuel gets dusted up through the Glimmer, tries to TP, but the Fisher will be there from Hustler, and he's going to die very, very easily. Ice Blast flying in. Drew is there. Doesn't have Chrono, but doesn't need it. It's going to go straight onto Skem. This Pause 1 Venomancer really just doesn't work. No. It's, uh... No, it really doesn't. It's the, it's the scaling of the hero, right? Like, you mentioned it earlier, but you reach past the point Venomancer is just not a hero. He doesn't do damage. He doesn't have control. 
I mean, you don't even have a BKB on Drew. He can just play around with his Manta style and suddenly all your damage is gone. So it, it's really losing its presence. It hasn't even gotten the best push coming out as well. And I think this experiment, well, it, it will need a lot more to get it working. Still, they've got to hold on to their high ground. Now, RR does have Chrono back up. They can just fight. You do have your Paj there now with the Daedalus up, but... Oh, the repair kit, just delaying things out for that tier 3 tower. RR are going to be forced to back off again. We'll have to switch up lanes. Uh, yeah, RR. Uh, I believe that was the last repair kit charge being expended. Yeah, it's uh, going to make it easier to approach that high ground now. And... RR, I mean, even if they step back there, you know, they, they have control of the map. They've got a 14k advantage. They're still slowly building up. You've got a lot more items coming out here. Drew is still saving up for his Satanic. Just wants to stand and fight in front with no worry in the world. Alacrity's saving up for that butterfly. Really starting to hit like a truck on that SF. And there's just a lot of scaling left. For RR with Neon, it's really starting to just build into your pod. Going for the MKB preemptively for the damage and of course to ensure that no hits miss. And Raging Potato already has the Ag, so the only thing left is a BKB on our Void Spirit. Just to be able to stand and fight, but the scaling is starting to be a bit of an issue as it all really lies in your pod to get the damage out. Quite literally, it's just him. The uh, Benno and well, the Void Spirit can do some work with the Ags, but overall, just the uh, the damage output is not there. Drew will get started on that top tier 3 tower. Raging Potato going to jump in with the Resonant Pulse. Going to force back Drew. They do have a 14k net worth lead on this RR side right now. The uh, yeah, and, win probability uh, is currently sitting at 98% for this uh, this die side. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that's about right. I think Chrono is just really hard to fight into as the game grows late. I think one thing as well right now is that you have 25 on Drew, so he is just so much tankier with backtrack. You know, that's something that ignores every other thing. There's nothing that pierces that, unless maybe a silver edge break, but. If it works the same way as it did before, right? MKB doesn't care. I mean, it doesn't care for MKB. So he's just so much tank here. And he can't just stand and fight. He, he's feeling confident. KYXY, there's going to be a smoke out from Neon oh. Esports. Running the long way around. They're going Roche. They're going to try, but Alacrity does break it. Now getting the surprise of his life. Aetherim are going to lock him in, but Hustler is there. Echo being committed, and now Drew jumps in. No targets to Chrono. So they'll just kill off the Enchantress. Play hard. We'll be able to get out. The buybacks do also come out from the side of Neon. They'll commit too. Roshan is... It's not even being started yet by Alacrity. He's just waiting to see what his team wants to do. They weren't intending uh -huh. on going for the Roshan. Near on a back, Drew just uses the Diffusal Blade and Skem is being chased down. Drew, do you want a Chrono? No, Yules will come out from Raging Potato. Aether Remnant is there. Alacrity, they are going to turn around back onto the Enchantress. That's a die back on Januel. And it's back to the Roshan pit, I believe. Yeah. It's uh, still four heroes up for Neon, but they're playing so conservatively. They know they can't just jump in now. They've got the numbers disadvantage, and they were the ones trying to sneak this in. They get punished for it. Uh, Yopaj just blinking out the moment he saw the Shaker come in. So they didn't lose their TA, but this is a big objective to just give up. Neon, they're going to... Try and skip creep waves, it seems, to drag out this game a little longer. And uh, try to find a way back into this. But they aren't at the top lane, they're in the mid lane right now. 
Maybe they try to go for a kill onto KYXY, but it's not going to be that easy. Yopage? I... What are you doing there, sir? There we go. He'll blink out. <laughs> uh, you know, you've got some of the best tier 4 items dropping as well for RR. That leveler always comes out when you're ahead. You know, it, it's something that we see every single time. It's just, yeah, you're ahead. Just melt these buildings, you know? Just have this. Butterfly up on Yopage now. He's got plenty of farm on that TA. Oh, man. That tier 3 just melts. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. And now, oh, the Enchantress, oh, oh no, Scam, that Ooh. was the Venno. Now Raging Potato jumps in, they do get the Warriors Punch off, but a Chrono oh. does come out from Drew. It is massive, he catches three. Now the double Chrono oh. from Drew with the Refresh and the Overgrowth, and it's GG. Ooh. RR, just ruining Neon's debut. It looked like Neon had their number earlier, Alacrity had a very rough start. But they stalled the game out long enough to find their farm, and they bounce back in. As it went on, there was just no answer. It's a it's a faceless void. Chrono was always going to be big, and Skem's Venomancer could not find enough to really have a presence in this game. Yeah, I'm yet to see what the point of a pause one Veno is. In all honesty, I, I I can't remember the last time I saw a position one Veno win. It's uh yeah, just always seems Been to have while. a good start. And then just, once you hit the mid-game, it's just nothing. It just doesn't do anything anymore. Still, we'll find out how game number two goes. It is MLP Dota and Dronix Fire. This is Neon Esports vs. Reality Rift. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes for that second game.